Hello everyone and welcome to What's Your Point? We'll be getting started here in just five minutes. Thank you so much for joining us and we look forward to seeing you more later. Feel free to jump into the comments if you have any questions or any feedback or... Well, you know what, let's not do those. Just give us compliments and thanks. Thank you to everyone who's watched us and joined us so far. We'll be getting started here in about five minutes. Feel free to share with everyone. What's your point? First episode, starting in five minutes.
Thank you again for joining us, everyone. We'll be getting started here in just a few minutes. Exactly two to be exact. Go ahead and put your say hello and comments to our panel tonight. And thank you for coming out. Getting started here in two minutes. Hello everyone, and thank you so much for joining us on our first pilot episode of What's Your Point? What's Your Point is a trivia game show uh, created here. Uh, it's also a panel show if you're familiar with old shows on places such as BBC uh, with like QI and all of those types of shows. I'm sure you know what we're talking about here. Um, we're super excited to have you all here joining us today. Um, so let me go ahead and go over how the game works before we go any further. Let's go ahead and bring that up here. <clears throat> here we are. Welcome to What's Your Point, a panel show full of difficult and silly questions answered by two teams of players with one pl person playing for both teams. While they're encouraged to talk about their answers and go through their logic, to answer this point, if they ever go on too long before getting to the point of the question, the other team may say, what's your point? The titular question of the show, and the other team will have to quickly answer the question, or play goes over to the other team. Each player has exactly one what's your point throughout tonight's whole game. We're going to start off with a toss-up question where everyone's going to get to voice in, and the first person to actually get to the point will get the points, and their team will get to start off. Let's go ahead and welcome our panel tonight. We've got the wonderful John Lascarette. There you are, John. How you doing? I'm good. I, I was surprised it was me being first and described as wonderful. So thanks. Oh, you're welcome. And let's go ahead and welcome the even more wonderful, their partner, oh, Mary Goodall. How My you doing, Mary? Doing well. Doing well. Excellent. More wonderful than John is highly debatable. Mm-hmm. Well, I get to make the decisions here. Uh, playing against them tonight, we've got none other, the one, the only, Julie Sinkoff, who is also wonderful. Greetings. You wonderful people, you. Oh, everything's just so wonderful tonight. Um, Julie, uh, how are you doing? Wonderful. Excellent. Uh, Chris. Wonderful. And finally, Chris Crotty, the wonderful, the one and only. Chris Crotty, how are you doing? I think I'm going to barf. <laughs> <laughs> You're so full of wonder. Just hang, hang in there for forty-five minutes. <laughs> Too much wonderful. <clears throat> now, John and Mary are going to be playing against Julie and Chris, but helping them out both tonight, uh, helping out both teams tonight, it's going to be Eric Daryl Worsley. Eric, how you doing? Hey. <laughs> Yay! I see guys the blue and trees of green. <laughs> <laughs> So, Eric, uh, let's go ahead, and uh, I, I see that you've already living in such a wonderful world with that comment right there. We're going to go ahead and get started with the toss-up question of the night. I know you all know what I'm looking for here. I'm wanting you to discuss it amongst yourselves. First person to actually get to the actual point of this question will 
be the team that goes first. Eric, if you're the one who gets to the point of the question, you get to decide which team goes first. Okay. So, here is tonight's opening question. Panel. Why are yo- sorry, why- let's try that again. Panel. Why yeah, were yo-yos this... banned in Syria? I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna go straight out to the thing of yo-yos were originally weapons. They were designed as weapons, so uh, Syria probably felt that they were um, <coughs> concealable weapons that well, could be all plastic and not detected by metal detectors. It, it does have to do with weapons, but it's because uh, you're yo-yoing and you're going to trip a landmine. It's true. And I, I thought, I thought the uh, the string was a ch children's choking hazard. Too many children were getting their hands on yo-yos and actually just swallowing them whole. Just in Syria? <laughs> just in Syria. No, very specifically in Syria. That's why they Landmines. <laughs> Boom. They'd have to get rid of the kites. I don't want to say anything against John, but um, they, they were nicer looking than the wheels on any cars in Syria, and so they were jealous. And that was hard for them. Very hard. Eric, what do you have to say about this? I don't, you know, maybe this is I just a like. To, I believe John is correct. I believe they were originally designed, or I don't know if they were they were used as weapons and were banned as originally. such. All right, all of you are very off base here, <laughs> so let me help Yay! sharpen the point a little bit. This took place in 1933. Oh, in Syria. So if that would have helped. If you know that the ban took place in 1933. So if you know your Syrian history, that'll help you out. Because Nazis don't know how to yo-yo. You so, know, uh, I could see maybe because they were against German imperialism, and they came from Germany. <laughs> they were imported did, from Germany. <laughs> did it have to do with like, like so if you think of the term like yo-yoing, like maybe they were like, Maybe they had food, and then they didn't. And there was like, I don't know. A, You're getting closer shortage, there, Julie. You're getting closer there. something, and then they had some, okay, something. There was a confusion between yo-yos and yoo and uh, <laughs> the egg and the yoo creams are not halal, so. <laughs> Maybe they were very thirsty, and they wanted a yoo -hoo. The strings were needed for the, for the upcoming war effort. And so they needed to conserve oh. string. Oh. Were they going back between choosing between uh, Sunni and Shia? So they were going back and forth between two Islamic oh, yeah. sects? So I think what I'm hearing here is that nobody really knows a whole lot about Syrian history. Um, or yo-yos. Or yo-yos. Yo <laughs> so let or me put you on the back. Right, let me put I should say. I'm sure somebody out there knows quite a bit about Syrian <laughs> history. Let me put. Uh, let me go ahead and put you on a little bit more of a right path here, Julie. When you're talking about there being a food shortage and them wanting a drink, that's where you're getting closer. Uh, uh, Yo-yos. Um, maybe. Okay. All right. So yo-yos were banned because, like, maybe there were kids running around and, like, they would like as pranks, like yo-yo and like knock pies off of windowsills or hit or, cows. Like, Cow udders or uh, goat udders by accident. Yeah, no, and they would no, startle the goats, and then the goats wouldn't make any more milk. Getting a drink, like like yeah. not having enough food and needing a drink. I'm thinking there was a huge problem with people like over imbibing alcohol Ooh. and using yo-yos in the street and causing problems. If you but, were sober with, while um, using yo-yos. You untwist them and it's two martini glasses, and <laughs> we needed that. So. Except it's an is Islamic country and alcohol is prohibited. So, <clears throat> all right, Chris has tapped onto something here. here. Yo, guy. Oh. <laughs> Chris did tap into something here. Oh. It was Muslim chiefs that co that uh, pushed for the ban. Oh. Okay. So. Um. So was it a belief thing? Like, did they believe that like? the yo-yos like caused harm or something they were causing some they believed that they were causing something okay, yeah okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> they caused as people followed in general. what was that eric 
Were they just against frivolity in general? Not Were they really. very serious chiefs? It was did they, that did they cause as hunger? the yo-yo went down and, and up, made it look like men were like like just saying yes <laughs> concentrating Wait. on like looking at a woman head to toe and that was not okay no does it have to do with the yo-yo itself though like it has to do with what they felt the yo-yo bad luck they kind of it's something that they felt the yo-yo represented uh the yo-yo is money and power and food and water or ascending to heaven, maybe? The, going from hell to heaven or something? They didn't like that? or We were on the right track, though, with like with food and drink. So uh, yo-yos, they thought yo-yos would cause... And it uh, the event that led to them banning it did have to do with cattle. So, like, did the cattle stop producing milk and they couldn't drink anything? I mean, they, they were having a hard time giving drinks to things because of something weather yes yeah that's what it is they banned the yo-yos because they blamed the long cold drought Shut up. on the popularity of yo-yos and that the yo-yo goes down and never touches the ground before going up that was telling the rain to never touch the ground oh, and wow. so muslim chiefs on january wow. 8 january 18th of 1933 went to the prime minister of Syria, whose name I am not going to mispronounce, so I'm not going to say anything, um, and uh, convinced the prime minister that they were to blame. Yeah, yes. And then they sent the police department to go and confiscate every yo-yo that they saw That's somebody right. playing with on the street. Wow. Um, this was yeah. first recorded in uh, the uh, January 19th, 1933 New York Times. Um, it's since been lifted. Uh, but it was one of those, oh, we God. forgot about it, bans <laughs> being lifted. So yeah, technically like, it's still on the books. So is it, does this event have like a cute historical name? No, just the, the yo-yo ban. Yo-yo ban it needs one, that's why it hasn't been remembered. Yeah, I think yeah. that's what we need to do. Is By the end of this, think of everybody's, <laughs> think of what you would call this event. But Julie, you won oh. the point, so that means your team goes first. Just by guessing. Yeah, just by guessing. The Great Syrian Yo-Yo Band of 1933. Mm-hmm. That's my name. All right, so we're going to now jump into the main game. Woo! And today's main game is titled, Let's Eat. All of these are going to be quest questions. Let's try that again. All of these are going to be questions about food, drink, restaurants, etc., and so on. Yo -yo. Chris, Eric, and Julie. You are the first team to get this question. So the three of you will discuss amongst yourselves. And remember, Mary and John, if at any point in time you have a better idea, you could say, what's your point? Force them to answer, and then you can steal it. So let's go ahead and start with them. So I'm going to call you uh, the Blue Bonnets. So Team Blue Bonnets, why do Mexican restaurants have hooks on nearby tables and nearby posts? Why do most traditional Mexican restaurants have hooks available on tables and nearby posts? Nearby what? Well, nearby the table. I would logic like a coat, like a coat rack, or hats, or a purse, or a bag. Yeah, that's part Some of arrows. it. I th I think it might be because a lot of traditional hats are quite wide brimmed, and if they were to sit at the table, their hats would knock together. So they need mm. some place to put them. <laughs> a place to hang ponchos i would i think probably some kind of clothing thing. place to hang their yo-yos yo-yo <laughs> yo-yos can hang on the things yeah i feel like logically this would be a hat slash clothing but maybe it has something to do with the food oh the food oh uh, good call good call so the why why are there hooks you don't think they like used to hang like tortillas on the hook because they were really hot. So they would put them on the hook to air. This is me just making it up. I don't know if it's right. Um, it's like my sombrero <laughs> theory. <laughs> kind of, yeah. So they would, they would hang them on the hooks. So they would air out instead of like sticking together in a stack, it would airy. Right. And then you could just unhook them and make a taco. Mm. <laughs> Sir, I'm going out for all of this. Taco filling fall out of the hole that you put the hook through? Ooh, no, that's a good point, too. 
Mm, okay. That's the only problem? <laughs> That's the only problem. I think I it's know. where you put all the cilantro that you don't want because it's gross. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go like ahead and give you a little bit of a hint here uh, okay. to put you back on the right track. Um, it has something to do with purses. Uh, you did mention purses oh, I was, earlier. It has I something said to do purses. With purses. Yeah. Those and yes, purses. they would hang purses off of them, but why? So they could put leftover food in them when the meal was over. Or so they didn't put leftover food in it. So they weren't running off with the something. <laughs> With the ketchup well, and the culture. Well, yeah, why wouldn't they want purses at the table? What would I be mean, I, I wouldn't put my purse. Well, so, like, I appreciate an under the table hook for my purse so it doesn't touch the dirty floor. Maybe they don't want food falling off the table into somebody's purse. And if that is the correct answer, then I will do a cartwheel, which I don't know how to do. Um, I mean, for that's me speaking for myself. I have I have a hook and I actually have like a, a little gadget thingy that unrolls and it hooks onto a table so I can hang my purse up under a table. Not that I've been out in a restaurant in a long time, but it's just so it didn't get dirty. So you wouldn't have to put it on the floor and it kept it safe. Yeah. Well, why couldn't they hang it over the chair? Good, but that leaves your back turned to your purse. Maybe that's it. I will tell you that the origin of this does have to do with uh, safety, uh, but there is a uh, there is a superstition around it as well. I don't know what the superstition is, but all right. Well, maybe at restaurants they let children run around and they're worried they're going to get caught in the purse straps if they're over the chairs. And like the yo-yo, just choke you. <laughs> Maybe like maybe like a woman was responsible for like carrying a particular item. I don't know what. Like maybe like uh, I don't know. Maybe something in the purse is kind of like the last question is considered unlucky or something superstitious. Like if if the lipstick case came in contact with the salsa. <laughs> I think what it is, is they need a convenient place to keep a note to remind all the kids they're ugly so the devil won't get them. <laughs> yeah. Great throwback to the practice question before we started, Ari. I like that. Um, all right. So, um, do you have a final answer? Or maybe, like, so maybe, like, maybe they tried to protect the purse so that, like, they could, they could pay properly when the meal was over. Because maybe if they didn't have any money... They would get kicked out and banned from the restaurant. So yeah, I like that. Keep their purse in the safe, safe place, which would be via hook under the table by your lap. Yeah, and this is where we're going with. That's what we're going with. Yeah. All right. So here's what's going to happen, <laughs> uh, John and Mary. I want you to be fair on this. I'm going to tell you the actual story, and you can tell me whether or not you think they deserve points because they kind of got the point, but <laughs> not really. <laughs> so Mexican restaurants have hooks on tables or on nearby racks. Um, to save your money. There's a superstition that if money is left on the floor, it will walk away. That superstition was brought about back when street urchins would come and crawl across the floors of taquerias and steal people's money out of their purses. You know, I was going to say that, but I thought I'd get yelled at for being politically incorrect. <laughs> I swear to God, I thought yes. about that. Street urchins go across all cultures. <laughs> I was oh man, I was worried about getting canceled. In I, Japan, they're called street unagi. <laughs> I'm pleased and with the answer that I gave. That's that's an eel, though, not an urchin. Yeah, well, they don't call them urchins there. <laughs> now, who's gonna get canceled, John? Um, so, uh, so Julie, your your team's response was to make sure that the purse was kept safe and in sight. John and Mary, do you think that deserves a point for getting to the point? I don't know. What do you think, Mary? Sure. Just so we can move on with this game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one point to the blue bonnets. Yeah. We're now going to head over to um, the Violet Violins. Um, so, John, Mary, and Eric, here is your food question. During the late 19th and early 20th centuries, 
Why would Americans throw a live chicken into a new home? Once uh. again, during the late 19th and early 20th centuries, why would Americans throw live chickens into a new home? This, a uh, new home? Like, meaning they're moving in, or is it a newly built home? That they're moving into, from an old okay. home into a new home. Okay. Like to scare off the spirits. That's yeah. That was my first thought. Yeah. But that's why I asked if it was new home as in new construction or, right. or, uh, because why would, you know, why would there be spirits in a new home? But if it's new to you, right. then you want to get out all the, all the bad stuff. Because the chickens ate the sage. And so if they just run around, <laughs> it does the same thing. Or if there was something in there, if there was a trap, if for some reason they thought like, uh, they were being tricked into something. Maybe the chicken would uh, suffer the fate of whatever happened. Um, is that the homeowner didn't get it? Like like a uh, canary in a coal mine. Yeah. Does, does this connect to uh, carrying the bride over the threshold? Because the bride won't trip, so you just use the chicken as like a a substitute bride? As an avatar for the bride? <laughs> I will tell you this, you are not using the chicken as a substitute or avatar for your bride. <laughs> so they have... Like the threshold purposes. So they have something for their first meal. You know, their friends and family come by and they... Ooh. You can eat in your new home. You don't have anything in your fridge. and It does have to do with eating. That is the last part of it is eating. There's another part to it beforehand, though. Well, yeah, you got to cut so, it settled. Well, they're so close, I'd say, what's your point? Well... <laughs> they use their first, There's what's your best, point? Chris. So, so I, I would say that it's uh, so that the chicken could get fat on the bugs in the home before you, like, I like, like that. chop it and then eat it. Similar to that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Eric, you're feeling some on additional that? thoughts. What? I am 100% sure that that is totally accurate. And I'm going to tell you, no, that's not right. Um, <laughs> so it's going over to Chris and Julie. I'll give you 60 seconds to discuss okay. before you give me the actual answer. Hear, hear me out, Chris. Huh? I think I think the chicken is actually more has more purposes than just the meal. Okay. I think first they can maybe use like the feathers. For cleaning and dusting and then they also use the feathers for like bedding and pillows and sleeping and then when the chicken is naked and there's nothing chicken. left they eat the chicken for it's dinner. a big ass chicken it's a very big ass chicken <laughs> you have 30 seconds left that's um, what i think i i love i like mary's answer of just giving them food i think they should get the points but um you know yeah, and the bug thing made sense too. Um, why would you throw a chicken in there? Maybe if there was like evil spirits, maybe it would kill the chicken first. Because the chicken was just thrown. Oh, yeah, maybe the chupacabra will get the chicken first. <laughs> We're still in Mexico? Yeah, why not? <laughs> This question yeah. was American. I am going to give you the point on that, Chris and Julie. <laughs> what? What is yes. it? What did they add? According to the Encyclopedia of Superstitions, Folklore, and the Occult Sciences of the World, a comprehensive library of human and belief and practices and mysteries of life, volume one, first edition published in 1903. Yep. Yep. You should Says. always throw a live chicken in the house before you enter and then kill and eat the chicken that night as the first to enter a new domicile is always the first to die. <gasps> Shut the front door after you can also you in do the house. This, You can also do this with an old dog or cat, but just oh. don't eat them and just hope they die quickly, as eating dog or cat is also bad luck, according oh to God. the same book. This is terrible. I don't like that answer. But yeah, the answer is the first to enter a new home will be the first to die. Um, and so... I don't feel like they got that. They, they, just, they said they threw it in there and, and it got killed the first. first. I, I'm on my team and I don't feel like we got it. <laughs> can, can, we both, can we get like a half a point? Coal mine thing and, you know, John got that part, so. 
All right, so Chris is saying that they don't deserve the points, <laughs> and if a player on your team is saying you don't deserve the points, I'll give it to the other team. I, I, yeah, I thought Mary had the best answer. Yeah, so you have something to eat. That's also part of that was part of it too. It's part of it. Yeah, we started off with warding off the bad. Spirits. I was right though. But warding off the bad spirits, but you, you didn't get to the 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 point of it being the first to enter is the first right. to die. And that's what the point so was. So you're making the now chicken the red shirt. A, a what's your point? Science officer. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So that makes the score tied up with the violet violins with one, the blue bonnets with one, and Eric with two. Good Ooh. job, Eric. Yay! All right. So going to win this. <laughs> so. The uh, blue bonnets, the next one is for you. In 2015, okay. researchers at the University of Michigan discovered what about pizza? In 2015, researchers at the University of Michigan discovered what about pizza? Um, Besides, it tastes better when you're high? Uh, it's magnetic. I don't know. <laughs> um, discovered what about well. pizza? That it was delicious. <laughs> what would they study, like... So, okay, so if it's University of Michigan, it was like, maybe it was like a study with like college students and pizza. Like maybe, so- uh, So we're back to John's answer. What? Back to John's yeah, answer about pizza know. being better when you're high. So, oh, so. <laughs> kind of. Really yeah, no, but maybe, maybe they studied like, maybe they, so maybe they discovered that like college age students are the biggest consumer of pizza nationwide uh, i bet it's more like a health thing like it lowers like something like it lowers blood oh. pressure or, or must be the cheese <laughs> um i mean it's got to be something new because that's I think recent they, yeah 2015 it wouldn't um, like the college age they, they would know that right um, oh like oh i know what it is i actually know the answer it's Tell that me. it it's actually safe to eat it if it's been left out all night. Oh. Well, that was a recent finding. I don't know if it was the University of Michigan. I like Michigan. that. I and, like that. But yeah, there was a recent cool. finding that said that it had antibacterial properties and that it was pretty safe to eat it if it was unrefrigerated overnight. Oh. I I like that answer. I like it. You know what? I think we've gotten the point. Let's. I say well, that. Might, that ahead. might be a recent study, though. That might not be that old. But I'll, I'll, we don't have anything I else. I think it's good. I, I like yeah. it. I like it. It makes sense to me. Let's do it. And you're wrong, John okay. and Mary. Yeah. Chance to steal. But that is oh. true. I, I mean, it is true, but it wasn't from a 2015 yeah. the, this yeah. this research project. Too early. So you're saying you're saying this was who did the research? University of Michigan. University of Michigan. So maybe they were studying the effect of pizza on students, you know, like if you get all logy from eating too much pizza, like all that gluten or whatever might actually affect your brain. <laughs> so it could affect your grades uh, if your diet can uh, subsist mostly of pizza. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's you know, a combinations of flavors thing. It does have to do with combi It does have to do with the combinations of the primary flavors. <gasps> oh, of, uh, of, of oh, it's fat, whether or not salt, sugar, uh, pineapple on pizza should be there. Ooh, <laughs> ooh, a definitive I answer. Do with um when you bake the pizza, does the salami, the nitrites, and the bad things that are within those meats get cooked out sufficiently for? Um, you know, making it healthier. I think it's healthier than <laughs> healthy pizza. Yeah. All right. I'm going to tell you this. You're all wrong. Okay. <laughs> cool. And yeah. I'm going to explain it and uh, feel free to comment after. Um, <laughs> according to a 2015 research uh, by food scientists at the University of Michigan, they discovered that pizza was the most addictive food. Using the oh. Yale Food Ad uh, Addictive Scale, which was created in 2009 at Yale, uh, to discover food addiction and how to treat it, they found that the combination of the fats, sugar, salt, and the water solubility of pizza to be the easiest food to overindulge on. Um, Follow-up studies have proven this to be the case regardless of toppings choice as well. But so, they have bad water in Michigan. 
Well, so, only in Flint. <laughs> but because the, the, the crust, because the crust dissolves easily when it's mixed with saliva, right, plus right. the saltiness and the fat and the sugars, the all combination right, of all of those that. creates the most addictive food. I was possible. getting there. Ever? Like when, when you've had too much, like you can't study well anymore because you've got a big old mm. carb... Like, carb overload. Stomach. Interesting. Interesting. It's listening, by the way, the experts still say, don't eat f f pizza that's been left overnight. <laughs> I've definitely done that. Unless it's Absolutely. cold enough because you live in Michigan. Yeah. <laughs> Just to get outside. See, when I eat pizza, when I... When I I don't have room in the fridge for a pizza. I'll just like put it in the microwave or the oven. I'm like that's that's air sealed enough. <laughs> <laughs> enough. <laughs> well, that just means that you must eat it or reheat it. You don't get to enjoy it as cold pizza for breakfast. <laughs> right. A follow-up fun fact: According to the American Test Kitchen, the best way to reheat pizza is slice by slice in a foil-topped cast iron pan. Wow, I'll get right on that. Mm -hmm. And who it's has time for that? Yeah, it's still much easier than the Over the top. Yes, you just put a, like a tent of foil over the top. Okay. Instead of using a lid, you want to use a tent of foil. Um, so, uh, no points okay. were awarded there. Okay. Uh, but now we're going to the next food question and going to John and Mary and Eric of the Violet Violins. During World War II, why did the government encourage us to eat more bacon? So that pigs is your question. Were, <laughs> pigs were easier to raise than beef. I mean, yeah, I know <laughs> beef was rationed. Yeah. Um, like officially, so the our boys over there could get nice and strong. <gasps> so that beef. they could have the pig skins to make more, uh, like helmets and protective gear oh, and things like that for the soldiers. You know what? Um, or boots. I think I think it wasn't the skin. I think it was the the fat. I think it was the fat was like for explosives or something like that. Because they did, they had grease. You had to. Yeah, wasn't there something your, about saltpeter or something like that, right? Sure. I think it's because there were there was less leftovers. There's so much stuff you can use off of it, <laughs> and before you actually ah. get to the point of killing them. You can put any any uh, opposing sides. You can put them in the pigs, and they will dispose of the bodies for you. So you, it's a win-win. You have stuff before and after. Yeah. Uh, so, so what you're saying is, pigs are our way to be more frugal, though, with the yes. uh, American kitchen, as far as reusability of the of the, the fat. Uh... I'm going to tell you right now. You guys got the point. Yay! Oh. Um, during World War II, uh, the government encouraged us to eat more bacon to build explosives. Uh, oh. Yeah. Uh, the government wanted us to save our food scraps for the war efforts. Um, and the most popular government agency thought about this was the American Fat Salvage Committee. <laughs> they acquired bacon fat for glycerin products. Uh, they made posters of it, which I will post the poster of it because it's hilarious to look at and all of its World War II propaganda -ness. Um, piggies. And even brought in a special cartoon with Pluto and Minnie Mouse, where they featured them in a kitchen claiming every year two billion pounds of waste kitchen fats are thrown away. Enough <laughs> glycerin for ten billion rapid fire cannon shells. Wow. Just imagine Minnie Mouse saying that. No. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to. Ten billion rapid fire cannon shells. <laughs> That what Minnie sounds like? Eat some bacon, kill a Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much what the poster says. <laughs> Take your fat to your local butcher today. <laughs> this is really what they were all about. Wow. Um, all right then. Yeah, and uh, afterward, so that's why a lot of uh, that's why a lot of people from that generation, even growing up, um, that's what popularized the coffee can in the freezer or the coffee can in oh. the fridge full of. Of Interesting. Grease, because you could just take that and then be purified to glycerin. Oh. Yeah. Nice. Fascinating. Yeah, yeah I didn't right, know then. that like animal fats could be used for explosives. So. Yeah. So Eric, 
you pretty much nailed it on the head there, uh, <laughs> which means the Violet Violins get another point. So it is one point for the Blue Bonnets, two points for the Violet Violins, and three points for points Eric. For <laughs> so, uh, now we're going over to the Blue Bonnets. This is your final question. Um, yeah. And to remind you, uh, John and Mary, neither of you used to what your point, what's the point yet. Um, so, here we go. <laughs> um, your food question is this. Mm -hmm. Julie, Chris, and Eric. What's measured in butts? Liquids. Uh, Specific. Ale. ale, I believe, isn't it? We, yeah, just um, jump right to the point there, Eric. Good job. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, a butt is a, a butt is a class, is the size of a barrel. Yeah, a butt is a historic unit of measurement uh, for half casks, um, and uh, it's also called it, or uh, it's a uh, half a ton, um, and it equates to 126 imperial gallons of of wine, um, or 108. Uh, imperial gallons of ale. Uh, if it's 108 imperial gallons of ale, it's called a buttload. Is that where that comes from? Literally, yeah. Yes. Literally. Sounds like we need a tiebreaker. <laughs> wow. So is, that it, so is... is it butt, B-U-T-T, -T, same spelling? Yes, it is. Um, it's also called a pipe, um, which are both things that people can enjoy. Yes. Pipe load. Yeah, so a butt is a historic unit of measurement for half cast at a ton. Um, one of the earliest written mentions of its use as a measurement was in the release of uh, George, the Duke of Clarence, brother of King Edward IV, saying, the Duke of Clarence drowned in a butt of Malmsey in, in 1478. Now that's an insult. Mm -hmm. wow. And Malmsey, as we all know, is a sweet Portuguese uh, dry white wine. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I, yeah. I don't remember why I was trying to calculate how many gallons of something were in a barrel, but I was trying to figure out the significance of 10 barrel when it comes to brewing. And then like I found out about the butt mm. and, and stuff. I found out about the butt. I found out about <laughs> the butt. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, Let so, me tell uh, you about my butt load. <laughs> <laughs> butt stuff. <laughs> yeah, getting down. You know, that's what they say is wine and ale leads to butt stuff. <laughs> or pipe loads. stuff. You know. Uh, that's a that's a t shirt that could make some money right there. <laughs> amongst <laughs> home brewers. Okay. Uh, on the back it home says Kiss My Cask. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, so butt, the butt stuff. So the score is tied up two points to two points. Eric, you have four points. Congratulations. Um so Eric, no Good matter going, what, Eric. is going to win it. Um, yeah. so, uh, we're going over to Mary and John for the final question of the evening. Uh, 508 million pounds of what is stolen annually? How much? 508 Candy. million pounds. Oh. Of what I... is stolen annually? And this is to Mary and John and Eric. Pounds. I mean... I think I know the answer to this one. Should I just shut up? Shut up. Sure, yeah, if you wanted to. <laughs> you wanted... Eric's the ringer. Eric, what yeah. is your so... point? I'm using it. <laughs> yes. He's also on my team. Eric, okay, what is your point? So, Julius just jumped straight to it. <laughs> Eric, you were asked what's your point. Beach sand. Beach. What? Remember, this is a roundabout food. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's the beach sand that's in his picnic when he brings it home? Oh, like you mean people <laughs> taking it home from the beach? Like no, unintentionally? Uh, so it's so wait, is this on Julie like... for 60 seconds now? Uh, you know, <laughs> so, Eric. Man. No, Eric says beach wrong. sand. And I want to hear Eric's. No, I want to hear Eric's explanation as to this. I want to hear Eric's explanation as to how uh, beach sand ties into food. Sandwich. Exactly what I was thinking. Yes, I All was right. about to say that. Yes. So, Julie, you should, right. what's your what's, point on Eric? No. And Eric was wrong. Um, so, we're gonna go ahead and stick with John and Mary for All another right. couple of minutes. Oh, then, but it was not. Was and, that for us? What? Was that question for us? No, it was for no. John and Mary. Oh. 
Yeah. So, so John and Mary, I'll give you a couple. I'll give you a couple yeah. minutes more, and I will All let right, you keep so, your what's the point, Julie, so you could ask okay. it again later with them. So what was what was it? Was this worldwide or nationally? Uh, worldwide. Five hundred and eight okay, million so pounds of got, what is stolen annually worldwide? It's got to be something small because wait, million pounds? Yes, and I'm talking about weight. Okay. I'm not talking about British currency. All right. No, yeah. no, no. But 580 million pounds. I'm trying to like... 508. Not 580. Eight. 508. Million. Oh, that makes a difference. Million yeah. pounds. It okay. actually does for when people proof check me later on. 508 million pounds. Okay. Because I was going to say if it was 508 pounds, it would be something very small. What is it? Uh, uh, uh. Tic <laughs> I think you were right in the beginning, John, what you said in the in the first place. Candy? Like steel, yeah. uh, candies from babies. <laughs> You're ugly. Give me your candy. That's right. I <laughs> saved you from Satan you and gingivitis. That's right. 300 million pounds of it is in Bulgaria alone. <laughs> uh, hmm. Well, or, you know, candy on, on doorsteps. Uh, but maybe it's not candy. Like, what else do people steal? Apples from orchards? Pies from windowsills. Every story Ooh. has that. Yeah, that's right. Uh, secret toy surprises and cereal boxes. What else Ouch. do people steal as food? Um, sodas. Uh, the, the 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 hanging thing in the in the vending machine, and you shake it. <laughs> that's stealing, though. Really, that's just taking it. All right, all right. Else's. What is the point? All right. So you've got what's your point? You got thirty seconds to come up with your final answer. <laughs> Uh, well, he didn't give it to us when we said candy, so um, damn it. It's, uh, that's the best thing I got, or or uh, produce in the in like people walking out of grocery stores with food, or dogs with the links, you know, the cartoons, <gasps> links of sausage. Dogs. Go. I need your final answer. Uh, <laughs> Candy. I'm saying candy unless Mary stops me or Eric. I want I'm candy. sticking with beach sand. <laughs> <laughs> Sandwiches. Sandwiches. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry you are wrong. Um, what's your point? Goes over to John oh. and sorry. Goes over to Julie, Krista. Sorry, sorry Chris. Chris. Oh, that uh, was a all slip. Right. So, so I'll, let's I take that thinking, again. I was thinking pie, but then Mary said it, and they weren't given the point. So we know. Right. So I think it has to be some sort of actual, not an ingredient, probably some sort of made food or, or a basic ingredient. And that's okay. a lot of pounds. So what's like heavy and made? Like, like, like Eric, meat. you are playing on this team right now. So you could join like in and help meat? them out. Meat? Like, well, they, it's not sausage. So like maybe like eggs or, or bread or cheese or oh, something. Oh, wait. Eggs. Are we just listing eggs wouldn't go bad, but, but that... The other thing you said. Cheese? Cheese. Why cheese? Because cheese is heavy and okay. it's like eaten where everywhere. Are people, where are people stealing it from, though? Who was stealing cheese? Well, you could steal it from a dairy. You could steal it. <laughs> I mean, there's excess your, your cheese in the U.S. Your one minute is up. Your oh. one minute is up. Oh, oh. I need your final answer. You just want to say cheese? I like cheese. Cheese Everybody, is good. Everybody Let's likes eat. cheese. Even people the mouse takes the cheese. The mouse the takes the cheese. Stands the cheese stands alone. The cheese stands alone. The farmer is in the dell. Four percent of the world's cheese is <gasps> stolen annually. Oh, <laughs> and eight million pounds of cheese is stolen annually. Well, eat the damn. Most stolen food in the world. Primarily, it is resold Why? at high-end markets and restaurants, but some of it is kept for personal use. This was such a major problem that in 2017, the Italian police undertook Operation Wine and Cheese and captured 10 masterminds of 10 different gangs Ooh. who had stolen over 168 wheels of rare Parmesan valued at over $150,000. I'm going to watch so, the box trolls in an entirely what? different light. Okay, okay but you said that's only 4% of the cheese made? In the world, yes. That's a lot of cheese. That's still a lot of cheese. I eat cheese every day. Right, so it's like literal cheese thieves. 
Yes, little, cheese little cheese to cheese resell things. on not the black cheese market. Well, some, some not all of it is resold. Are really some of it is okay. Did you read yeah. in, in the Portland area? I guess yesterday, the day before, a guy from a winery says he was parked at Ace Hardware for an hour, and during that hour, thieves made off with ten thousand dollars worth of wine that was in the back of his truck. Somehow, they cut all the shrink wrap and moved it into another truck in a parking lot that he just happened to be in. <laughs> Sounds like that an inside. Sounds, sounds like an inside job, right? Or or an insurance wow. uh, fraud. Yeah, something, right? That seems way too convenient. But to go with the cheese, there we go. There's the wine. <laughs> there it is. So, uh, yeah. yeah, the the world's uh, the world's most stolen food is cheese, uh, with four percent of it cheese. being stolen annually. Yeah. Um, so, with the final score... It's like the sausage link <laughs> Yeah, just know, with the cartoon. Don't matter. You don't I was to totally thinking out. pies off of windowsills. That was great. <laughs> so, thank you so much for being here. Uh, before we go ahead and go over those final scores, um, this is What's Your Point? Um, we're going to try to go up every once every other week. Um, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, um, all of our shows on Fresnel Theater uh, are free of charge to watch but if you ever feel so inclined to contribute links are available in the uh, description um venmo at fresnel theater paypal us info at fresnel theater.org or you can go to www.tinyurl.com slash fresnel theater donate all of your contributions go towards helping our theaters succeed and move forward during these trying times there i finally said it during a match or a show um, so, with, uh, so thank you again to everybody for watching. Um, and it is time now for the final points. And last place tonight with two points. It's the Violet Violence. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, high five, Mary. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. High five, Mary. Uh, his hand disappeared. And in second place tonight with three points, it's the Blue Bonnets. Good Yay. Time. We're second. And in first place tonight... With five points, it's Eric Darrowworthy. <laughs> Eric wins. So I didn't realize we were all playing against Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Eric is playing with everyone. I thought he was just the pinch hitter. It's hey. okay. He thinks sand is a food. <laughs> I honestly thought that was a good answer. I was thinking sandwich. I'm like a sandwich, hold the witch. <laughs> <laughs> well, to hold the witch at bay, you have to call your baby ugly. And that's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> or throw so, a chicken at her. <laughs> yeah. Well, if the, if the witch is already in the house, you throw a baby at the first to die. Throw a baby at it. <laughs> throw a baby at <laughs> All right. So thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Um, I hope you had fun. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and send me a message uh, on Facebook, uh, and uh, I will. You know, we're still honing this and getting it going. So, once again, I want to thank my panel tonight. Give it up for John Lascarets, Mary Goodall. Julie Sinkoff, Chris Crotty, and the wonderful Eric Darrell Worsley. Good night, everyone. Thank you and take Bye. care.